guys. This is Tyler here with my buddy Rob at SportRx, uh, and we wanted to talk to you about driving sunglasses. There are a lot of questions out there, like what's the best pair, what kind of lenses should I get, what kind of frame should I get, and uh, to be honest with you, there's not like a one perfect answer for everybody. There are a lot of different topics, and we kind of wanted to talk to you about it. Yeah, there's like a lot of decision points, and we're just kind of going to start with every decision point we can come up with and kind of explain it to you. Yeah. Yeah. So What's what are your thoughts, Rob? I think the first thing you want to talk about is the frames. And when you're thinking about frames, I think the first thing is, do you want them to be like wraparound or do you want them to be a little bit flatter? So this would be like an example of a wraparound. Yes. And then something a little bit flatter would be something like, like something like that. So um, pros of wraparound is more coverage from mm -hmm. the sides. Um, pros of not wraparound is kind of look cooler. And maybe comfort as well for some yeah. people yeah. anyway. Yeah. It's definitely a, a big aesthetic thing. Um, uh, another thing, and really, okay, where I want to start personally is in the lenses. I think that's where it really matters because that's where you're going to get the protection uh, and that's where you're going to get, uh, you know, all of the, the visual enhancement, whatever uh, that you can get out of the lens. And a big question is polarized or not polarized. I think this is one area where it's it's pretty solidly, at least in my opinion, it's it polarized. There's not really a downside to polarize when you're wearing them for driving, uh, but there are a lot of upsides. So the polarizing filter cuts glare off of other objects, which is including the asphalt, that's including especially other vehicles. If you're ever driving like we are by the water, glare off of the water is pretty rough and it's gonna help minimize that, if not kill it completely and just give you a, a better, more comfortable experience. Yeah, it's the best ammunition for that bright kind of in your face glare, that glare that's bouncing off like the car bumper in front of you or you got like a big box truck that's like white and flat yeah. and the sunlight's hitting it and it's just like you can't see. The only thing that's really gonna help neutralize that is polarization. So uh, there's definitely a lot of pros and for me, all my driving sunglasses are polarized but there are sometimes maybe a couple of cons to think about. One is they're more expensive. The other one is depending on the type of digital readouts you have in your car it can interfere with that some heads-up displays have that problem some high-tech computerized screens have that problem but most car companies realize that people love polarized sunglasses and have been adjusting their digital readouts to work better with polarized glasses so i think when a lot of that digital stuff first came out polarized might have been an issue but the newer the car is maybe less of an issue but that's something to consider so um, but I, I i love polarized for driving it just cuts out a lot of glare and i'm not the kind of person that wears polarized for everything like for mountain biking i don't like polarized but for driving for me it's like for sure, but we do live in San Diego and it's pretty bright That's and there's exactly a lot of water, right. yeah. And so on that topic, uh, especially the note about how we are a sport company, we know everything there is to know about sport eyewear and what is the best to wear for that. Uh, when it comes to driving and people ask, well, what about tint color, what about lens color? Uh, you can do a simple gray or you can do something that's contrast enhancing, something like a brown or a rose copper. Uh, in those cases, there really isn't a best. Like I said, we're a sport company, we know what is best and a lot of times in sport applications, something contrast enhancing is best. Some of the benefits of contra uh, contrast enhancing lenses will be uh, some enhanced depth perception cues, uh, different colored things are gonna stand out against each other better because of that uh, color boost that you're getting. So potholes, things like that might stand out a little better. Uh, but honestly, at the end of the day, a lot of people really like just neutral color perception and that would be gray. And I, I mean, that's gonna be fine for you as well. There's not really a, a strong push, like you really should get contrast enhancing lenses over non, or you should really get non-contrast enhancing lenses. What do you lenses. prefer? Depends on the day. Yeah, so if it's kind of more overcast day or if the sun's rolling in and out or it's not the brightest day in the world, um, or you live in an area that's not that sunny all the time, like a brown or a rose lens, like uh, Tyler was saying, is gonna boost some contrast and uh, be really nice and maybe you can wear it in more conditions. But on a really bright day, man, something like just putting on that gray neutral, it's almost like, it's almost like soothing, right? You don't get right. that with a brown lens. It's almost kind of wakes things up, but the more of a gray lens is a little bit more soothing. Um, one thing to note too is sometimes it depends on um, your eye color and, and how um, 
sensitive you are to brightness. So usually if you have lighter colored eyes like Tyler does, you might be a little bit more light sensitive and you can go with a darker or more neutral kind of gray lens. Or if you have darker eyes like I do, sometimes the sun doesn't bother you quite as much and a brown lens might make more sense. So you, you do have to consider if you want more of a gray neutral lens or more of a brown, amber, rose kind of lens. So those are kind of like the talking points on that. Yeah. yeah. And then a, a quick touch on some people do also wonder what material. Yeah. Uh, in that case, I mean, really, there are just the there's the two options that are the primary ones. You have plastic or you have glass. The benefit of glass is it is optically superior, uh, just really, really good optics through that uh, less distortion and mm -hmm. chromatic aberration, whatever. Uh, but it's heavy and it's not impact resistant. But then the other end, it's very, very scratch resistant. Probably yeah. the most scratch resistant lens, well, absolutely the most scratch resistant lens is available with something like a plastic, polycarbonate, Trivex, whatever material you have, much lighter, uh, much more impact resistant, still good optics. The optics are getting better and better on them yeah. too, especially like a Trivex type material, um, but they scratch easier. But they're so much lighter, so it's like, if you have sensitive skin, sensitive nose, if you don't want dents on your nose, if, you're, if heavy glasses bother you, then kind of stay away from glass. If you want the most durable lens, if it's, you know, you want something like a tank that's gonna just last forever, then glass lens is gonna definitely last longer and be harder to scratch. But it's also usually more expensive, so there's a price point kind of thing to talk about between glass and plastic lenses as well. Um, I kind of like both. It's kind of hard to find glass lenses in prescription, so most of mine are not going to be glass, but uh, Costa does make glass lenses in prescription, so that's kind of cool. And they make a really good glass lens. Yeah. Um, and another thing that we get questions about, and something that would be nice if there was just that perfect solution, like, oh, I want to have the same pair on, say you're a truck driver, day and night. I don't want to have to take my glasses off, and they think, oh, transitions. That'd be a great option because they change when the sun comes out, they get lighter when the sun goes away. Unfortunately, there's not really a good solution there because it is reacting to UV exposure and your windows in your car, thankfully, are treated with UV resistance. So it's not getting that UV exposure that it needs to get dark. So you're not gonna have an option of a, a lens that'll be totally clear in low light and get dark in bright light. But yeah. then there's other options. Yeah, there's some other options. So like like Tyler was saying, regular transition lenses or photochromatic lenses that you would get on like your everyday regular eyeglasses. They work well indoors, they'll go clear, and outdoors they go pretty dark. Uh, depending on the one, some of them get really dark now. But in the car, they don't do much because the windshield's blocking the thing that activates them. So you're probably gonna need some prescription sunglasses. In the non-prescription world, and I think they even do prescription, Serengeti does this drivewear lens, which is actually activated by available light and UV light. So they will get darker behind the windshield. And there is a prescription version um, or a similar thing called DriveWare. That's a lens that has like three stages. When it's totally overcast, it's like lighter. If it's bright and you're in the car, it'll kind of go a little darker. And then when you go outside, the UV light even gets it a little bit darker. So um, if, you, if you want to transition or photochromatic and you are going to be using them for driving, just kind of make sure you're getting the right thing that's actually going to change in the car because like your regular eyeglasses with transitions don't do much in the car at all. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and a quick uh, note with Serengeti being uh, a topic of conversation, one thing that they do offer and is something that people ask about is uh, a gradient tint. Gradient means it's darker on the top, lighter on the bottom. As uh, so you can see here, it much fades lighter on the bottom. like my hair. That's so cute. And so uh, there are a lot of people who like this and find functionality for, <laughs> for this. Uh, the real benefit I see to that is that it's dark when you're looking out of the top and you're looking down at your dash and things in your car where there is more shade because the you know sun is outside, you're inside your car. You're going to be able to see a little easier. Then again, that's another one of those things that just kind of depends on the person. Yeah, and gradient I think is probably more fashion play than a functional play, but you're right, you can see like the inside better and then the, it's darker up top, so. For sure. Rob, what's yeah. your favorite frame material? Frame material, gold? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think what you're getting at is should I get a metal frame or should I get a plastic frame? 
I have yeah. a lot of sunglasses because I'm sunglass Rob, and for me it kind of depends more on um, what I'm wearing and the style of clothing, and if I'm more dressed up, then I usually want a metal frame. But there is something to kind of consider if you want something kind of like more of a metal frame that's going to have, um, no, we only have, oh, we have a few more, mm -hmm. kind of more of a nose pad kind of design, or if you want to go something with more of like a, a plastic frame that usually looks a little bit sportier. Um, some people don't like metal frames because they uh, leave, they can leave the nose pads, a little dense if you're if they're very heavy or your skin sensitive um, not a lot of metal frames with a lot of wrap around and a lot of coverage so if you are looking for a full wrap to give you full coverage there are a few like that Serengeti but um, usually gonna be flatter when you go metal I don't know I think it's just personal that seems to be kind of the the moral of this whole thing is that there is not a best uh, for all. It is a, what you think will suit you best. There are definitely comfort benefits to, you know, and some people, like you said, in plastic versus metal, like the nose pads, some people hate them. Uh, and you can get a plastic frame, you know, that has like a rubberized nose pad to keep a little more grip uh, on your face. Um, other things to consider is in really extreme hot conditions and we always recommend you do not leave your sunglasses in your car. Seems like something that should go without saying but a lot of people still do it, certainly more convenient. But you can, especially with the plastic frame, you come back to a, a, a frame that's totally warped and, and you know in some cases the finish is going to be wearing off or whatever. I put on metal glasses that are hot too. Like in your it, yeah, if it's in your car gets really hot. So Bad news. Um, yeah, just be careful of that. And then like I think part of that metal plastic thing is style and it's just kind of like what you like, what looks good, what's on trend, you know. Um, if you're not sure, you can always call us and talk to us and we can help you pick that out. But uh, style is definitely part of driving I wear. To me, driving glasses are like these aviators. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm thinking about wearing my cap and my scarf and some driving gloves and like open up the sunroof. Yeah, and With then the knuckles. I feel like this to me is like a driving pair of glasses, but um, maybe that's just kind of, maybe that's just how I roll. That's cute because yeah, when you drive, drive you rolling. Really? I yeah. guess. Yeah. So anyway, I guess as you've learned, uh, we didn't tell you what you need to get, but hopefully we gave you enough information to figure out what you think will be best for you. Uh, and if we didn't give you enough information, comment down below, give us some feedback on things that you felt like we should have covered that we didn't cover. We always get back to all of our comments. Call us. We love talking to you guys. Email us, whatever. Uh, we can help you get the perfect pair for you.